Hey friend, Brandon here. Real quick, this is not about the Galaxy Fold screen breaking. I was in the middle of editing this video when all the controversy started with Foldgate or whatever you want to call it. This is a fatal flaw that was found before all of this crazy drama happened that applies to all foldable phones, but we'll specifically look at the Galaxy Fold. If you want to hear my thoughts on the Galaxy Fold screens breaking and its impact on the industry as a whole, there's a link in the description and in the card at the end. Back to the original video. The Samsung Galaxy Fold is here. After much hype, skepticism, and even competition from other companies like Huawei with their Mate X, both you and I are able to ditch the tablet and have both a phone and a tablet in one, right? Unfortunately, that's simply not true. And for some reason, and as far as I know, no one else has realized this big problem. They haven't realized the fatal flaw of the foldable phone. And no, it's not the crease. Let me explain it to you because this is Tech Today. This video is sponsored by Eero. Get $100 off the Eero base unit with two beacons package and a year of Eero Plus by visiting eero.com slash tech today and at checkout enter code tech today. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. By now you've probably seen a bunch of first hands on impressions and maybe even some reviews. As a whole it seems like everyone is really excited and surprised by this phone. I think we can safely say that this foldable technology will be the feature in whatever form it manifests itself in. But for now the price is quite overwhelming at over $2,000 after taxes. Not only is that a hard pill to swallow because of the price, but it is also a first gen device. Many people in one of my previous videos on the Galaxy Fold, which you can check out up here, have left comments and have argued that the price makes total sense and it isn't a big deal. When the cost is as much as rent is for a modest apartment or small home here in Southern California, or months worth of rent in other parts of the country, I thought, you're crazy, right? Well, their reasoning was that it was a phone and a tablet in one. When phones cost upwards of $1,000 or more, and a tablet like the iPad Pro, which I think is the best tablet you can buy right now, is $1,000 or more, a $2,000 foldable phone doesn't really seem overpriced anymore does it? Some people would say, you have a tablet in a more portable size and it's your phone. It's actually a steal. Yeah, right. Mm, no, wrong. There's a fatal flaw in this logic. The Galaxy Fold is not a real tablet replacement. First, that small 4.6 inch screen on the outside is a bit small, and many people have expressed their confusion on why Samsung would put such a small screen on the outside of a phone. In fact, even one of their teasers showed a foldable phone that had a screen that was nearly edge to edge. So why didn't they include a full size screen? Well, think about it. At $2,000 for the device, adding a more expensive screen and technology to make it bezel-less would probably put them over the price point threshold that they had set. If you were upset about the price right now with this tiny screen, can you imagine what it would have been if it had a big screen? In a way, that small screen kind of makes it a bad phone replacement, but that's not really the fatal flaw. And sure, there is a crease, but that's also not the fatal flaw. That's coming up in a moment, but I need to give you some context so you can understand. The crease is something you can kind of see if you look at it at just the right angle, and you can even feel it if you run your finger across it right out of the box. That crease will create a bit of an inconsistency when you're moving across the screen, especially when you use a stylus like the S Pen. Now, speaking of the S Pen, since so many people commented on my previous videos that they don't understand why Samsung didn't include the S Pen, I have to talk about this. Even MKBHD wishes there was an S Pen with the Galaxy Fold. Journalists and other creators have shared this same desire. Imagine what this could be throw in the S Pen. The Galaxy Note line is amazing and the S Pen is really useful and powerful. It allows you to have this added functionality, the precision, and the ability to write things down or create art. It has a lot of really amazing tablet-like features, right? So why in the world would Samsung leave that out for the Galaxy Fold, a device that many say is a phone and a tablet? in one. I had been researching the various reasons why Samsung didn't include the S Pen, and for a time I thought it was simply because of size limitations. Maybe they couldn't fit the S Pen in the body. They did remove the headphone jack after all, but that isn't the real reason why it wasn't included. I found some information recently about the technology involved with the S Pen, and I thought I'd call up Max Weinbeck, writer for XDA Developers and a source for many of the Samsung leaks that we've had for the Galaxy S10 and the Galaxy Fold. I had to ask him if my research was correct. Thanks for helping me out 
out with this, Max. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So I was researching a bit about why the Galaxy Fold doesn't come with an S Pen. And in that research, I found out that Samsung wasn't the company that developed the technology for the S Pen, but they licensed the technology from someone else. Do you have any context for that? So for years now, Samsung has been using Wacom digitizers in their displays for their Tab series and Note series of phones. Uh, I have the Note 9 here and it has a Wacom digitizer in it. Uh, that digitizer was used um, specifically for the S Pen because they have the most accurate ones, they're pressure sensitive, whatever. But the actual digitizer that Wacom makes charges the S Pen through the display. Whoa. So when you're holding the S Pen above it, every older S Pen didn't actually have a battery in it. The battery came with the Note 9, but that wasn't actually for the digitizer. So it would just be able to charge it, and that's why Samsung used them, because it's better than uh, all essentially every other alternative. Even the Apple Pencil is a lot different than that. And then these Wacom touchpads and digitizers, for essentially every device, they've been used in everything. Illustrators, writers, journalists, well, whoever would want to be writing notes, uses a Wacom tablet. They're used by professionals everywhere. So Samsung said, hey, we want to have that same technology in our phones or tablets. So we're going to work with Wacom on getting these in our phones and tablets. So yeah, that's been my experience as well. I've noticed that most people that use Wacom tablets are using it for writing and content creation. But one thing that really stood out to me when I look at all the Wacom services and technology, everything is, is flat. It's a flat surface. And I read something about how important that is. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so Wacom digitizers right now, I don't believe can fold. Um, I don't actually understand how they work because a lot of that stuff is proprietary and they don't really post a lot about it. But from what I understand, it does require an essentially flat display. The Note 9 does have a slight curve on the side, but that is not a fold. There's a huge difference between a slight curve and a fold. So when you're folding it, that digitizer will most likely break. Mm. And it gets into more than just that. Samsung had to reinvent and essentially re-engineer their adhesive, their display, everything, their digitizer, everything for the fold. It's using all custom everything. A lot of that is just not possible to use with a Wacom digitizer. Wacom and Samsung will have to re-engineer everything to make it work. They'll have to create a whole new digitizer, a whole new display, just to support an S Pen. Dang. And for being a first generation product that was in development for, I think, eight years, it's crazy. It's not gonna happen first generation. Maybe second, third generation when they've had more time to focus on what they wanna do with the line, then maybe they will start adding support for the S Pen. The way that they actually have to make the display and how thin it is and all the custom adhesives, it just wouldn't work. Uh, you could try to make it work, but it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. Right now, um, Samsung must have realized that at some point in development and just said, we're going to push this off into the future until we get the fold completed and done and actually get a product shipping. But for now, we don't know what the fold is. Is it a phone? Is it a tablet? It might be both. It might not be. I would consider this very close to maybe a first generation iPad mini with a S10 Plus shoved onto the other side of it. I would say it's supposed to be a cheap tablet that isn't so cheap if that makes sense. Dang, that's uh, kind of a big blow. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for joining me, Max. Yeah, of course, thanks for having me. So do you get it now? This is what no one else is saying and may even be aware of. This is the main point. To say that the foldable phone acts like a phone and a tablet combined is wrong. To say that it justifies its price because it's a two in one and you're replacing a tablet is simply not true. A true tablet is not just something with a big screen, but something that is more robust and has powerful features like stylus support and the power features that the S Pen or Apple Pencil provides to give you that amazing content creation experience that tablets offer. Like Mark has Brownlee and many others, and even you, you may have found it odd that there wasn't an S Pen that came with the Galaxy Fold, especially at that price. You wished it did have that stylus. Nowadays, having a stylus is something that you use with a tablet, but you can't with the Galaxy Fold. And until the technology exists, you won't be able to in upcoming generations either. The Galaxy Fold is not a tablet replacement. It's not a 2-in-1. It's maybe a 1.5-in-1. And that, my friend, is the fatal flaw of the foldable phone. Knowing of this fatal flaw, 
should you get the Galaxy Fold? I'm not so sure you should, but I did, so hit the bell. You know what also gets my bell ringing? This video's sponsor, Eero, and their simple and powerful mesh Wi-Fi routers. In my house, our router was set up in the middle of it, but I couldn't get signal in my room, so I ran a cable to my room and bought another router. I wish I had picked up an Eero to create a mesh network from the start. It was super easy for me to set up through their simple app, and now my entire house has great signal. And with Eero Plus, you get total network protection to block malicious and unwanted content. There's a content blocking feature if there are certain sites that you don't want your kids or yourself to access, and third-party security apps added from EncryptMe, 1Password, and Malwarebytes. Now, those added security apps on their own would normally cost you about $275 a year, but it's added as a part of the Aero Plus subscription. I use those services, and I'm paying more than what Aero Plus costs per year and they're included with it. I wish I knew about that sooner because that's a steal. <laughs> Don't make the same mistake I made. Start with Eero. Get $100 off the Eero base unit with two beacons package and a year of Eero Plus by visiting eero.com slash tech today and at checkout enter code tech today. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.